Okay. Here we are. Pesach is over now. Wednesday night, April 23rd, 2014. We're going to brief look at Harambam. The last class we had, we were discussing certain aspects of Harambam and how, even though we've known it, more and more evidence is turning up that Maran wasn't exactly 100% fair to his rule of two out of three, the three being the Reef, the Rambam, and the Rosh. And that many times he sided with the Rosh against the Reef and the Rambam, and we saw that this was because that within Spain itself, the Rosh, basically for some whatever reason, the last couple hundred years, took charge and moved away and pushed out the old Halakhot and Hagim that were based upon the ancient teachings of the Talmud, of the Geonim, of the old time Seferadi Rishonim. Question: Was it? The beginning of the end started with the Rosh, or a little bit before him? What do you mean the beginning of the end? I guess when the Ashkenazim took over and well, took our country. Yeah. Well, the, the Rosh came in, the Rosh came into northern Spain, to Toledo. Okay. Let's say that's around, a little bit before 1300. Okay, so, I don't know if you want to call it the beginning of the end or the end, because it t- took time, obviously, for the Rosh and the practices of Ashkenaz to make their way and take hold in Spain and excuse me and for people to adapt them and not only just to adapt to them but to totally uproot the older customs that existed, replace them with these rulings of the Rosh, which a lot of them are based on the Ba'alit Tosafot as we saw, and then not only to take it there, but they are now being, you know, exiled from Spain and they're carrying them over into Greece and into Turkey and into Israel. Is it because because Spain was Christian then? It went from Muslim to Christian? Yeah, it definitely went Christian. It definitely went Christian. Of course, Christian rulings, you know, carried... uh, So Sephardi moved out in some sense because of the Muslim rulings? No, Sephardi didn't move out, but the mindset definitely had to change. You're now... If you're living in a Muslim country, a Muslim environment, your mindset is in tune with a more Muslim way of thinking. When things become more Christian, your mindset is more Christian. People living in this community, for example, came from Syria, came from Egypt, came from Lebanon, came from old Eretz Israel, and all basically Muslim influenced more than Christian influenced, even though there was some Christian influence. Coming out to the United States, predominantly Christian country. Nowadays, we don't know what kind of country it is, but. (laughs) <laughs> no, and they came here in a Christian country. And so you see the mindset of Jews in this country is very different than the mindset of Jews that were living in the Middle East in a Muslim mindset. Even Sephardim that came from these Muslim countries, over time they adapted. Over. Even the ones that didn't really interact as much, you know, it didn't go, let's say, to a, to, you want to call it Ashkenazi Yeshivot, but just the mindset, Christian mentality filtered into our brains and takes a, it takes a hold and takes an effect on the way we view Judaism. I honestly believe that. And if you, obviously if you look through philosophy, you, yeah, could, so. you could pull out, you know, clear examples of it. But so now, we see that from different sources that we mentioned last week, or the last class rather, was that the Rosh definitely had a major influence and we showed numerous Hassanim who referred to the Rosh as the Marad Atra and that we are, that he is the chief rabbi and our rulings follow the Rosh and our practices follow the Rosh. Now we're going to take a step back and we're going to say, whoa, what's going on here? Let's see. Rambam. What happened to Rambam? Was it Rambam the chief? At least in El Israel, you know, the Israel and the surrounding environs were considered his territory. So let's see what he has to say over here. Harambam Nahshab the Marad Atra Shasafon Africa. Okay, Rambam was considered the Marad Atra of North Africa. As we know, Harambam left from southern Spain, from Cordoba, and he made his way across across the Straits of Gibraltar, right into North Africa. So at the very least, until 
the Spanish exiles arrived in Spain right after 1492 or in 1492 at least until that time Rambam was considered the Mara de Atra you have to remember Rambam passed away approximately 1204 so Rambam left Spain way before these people were leaving Spain so Rambam had, a, had his foothold in North Africa for a good close to 300 years and it wasn't only in North Africa, but throughout the entire countries of Islam, all Muslim countries of what we call the Middle East nowadays, more or less, before the appearance of Shaharu, everybody followed Harambam. Till today, the Yemenites consider Harambam the rabbi and they follow Harambam. And we know, you know, more than you'd imagine of his rulings have remained within the confines of Halakha among the Jews of North Africa. Nasir Besider chronology at the Mikorot and Maidim Alta, Shaharam Bam, Hayam Arad, Atra, Gambe in Israel, began Beater Asot Arab. We're going to look at the sources that seem to point and show that Ramam was the Marad Atra in Israel and in Muslim countries, and we'll look at them in chronological order. Katabat Tur. Okay, as we know, the Tur is the son of the Rosh. So, what is the Tur saying in your Rediah? Katab Haram Bam. Shabiha Ben Mibarek Shahian al Kol Mila Mila Ubana al Tur Katab Shaino the Barek Behind that I was on Bambi his hat maybe. The Azekata Maran Bet Yosef. And what did Maran comment on the writing of the Tur? Ubhol El Israel, Ve Surya, Ve Sibibotea, No Hagim the Wash Shahian, the Fishahim, Sumhim, Beholotehim, Al Pi Haram Bam. So Maran himself made a clear statement that throughout Israel and Syria and all surrounding areas, the custom is to follow Rambam because they rely on him and for the, for his rulings. Rambam is what they relied upon. Remember, this is before Shuharu, before Rabbi Yosef Karo wrote the Shuharu, which is his commentary called the Beit Yosef. And he's writing that all the Jews here follow Rambam. Can you take him literally here? When he says the Chorot. They rely on everything? He's well, just bringing one more, more than everything. Well, not, not everything, but definitely more things than not based upon this. Because if it was only the one issue, he would say, but this is Right. Alright? Or. But the way he's saying it, it's very, very clear. Harashbesh. Okay, Rabbi Shalomo ben Rabbi Shimon ben Rosh Harashbesh. Rabbi Shimon bar Sebah Doron Shahazab, it's a Farab Bishnat 1391. Be'ad Botha Pogram Shekilu Shilish me with this Farad. Be'ad Yashem be Algeria. So Rashbesh. Okay, he fled Spain 1391 and he settled in Algeria. Katab in the 15th uh, century. The before Maran was born. Okay, in Shilosh Hotarashbesh. Vehoha Maarab, Usfarad, Beham Mizrah, Behasebi. We're talking about Harambam. He's saying that throughout the Ma'arab, Ma'arab meaning not the West, you're thinking Western Europe or London or Amsterdam, the Ma'arab being the Maghreb, Maghreb being North Africa. Usfarad, Spain, the Hamizrah, and the East and Middle East, the Hasidi, it is Hasidi, we know it is Israel, Ubabil, and Iraq, Mesopotamia, Kulam Nuhagim. They all follow who? Rambam. 
It's a very powerful statement. That you could definitely take to be yeah. okay. But who else was there to follow then? The Reef. The Rosh already, you know, was around. <coughs> so very similar. I never really seen the Rambam, but so. The Reef and the Rambam are similar, but you don't find statements like this about the Reef. Yeah. Because uh, the Mishnah Torah was much clearer. Much, much clearer. And uh, it, it was accessible to everybody. That was Rambam's point. Yeah. Rambam said, I want to make a book so people could... You don't have to go searching throughout the Gemara and not know what to do. I'm going to write this book and you can take the Gemara, shelf it. Plain and simple. Take your Gemara and shelf it here. Everything is here. He didn't leave one thing out. The most obscure halakhot are there. It is amazing for one man to go and codify everything like that. You know, and he wasn't uh, being paid a salary to do this either. Oh. He was. He didn't get a sabbatical to do this. He, you know, <laughs> he felt he couldn't get paid for that. <laughs> Hello, I have to make money off the Torah. The Adar Kesat Litne Maran, Kotev Harat Baz, Beshelo Chosholo. Harat Baz was brought up in class many times in the past. Sure. In the Vid Ibn Abi Zimra, we know he left Spain. And he settled in Egypt and later on in Israel. Let it be known. Egypt is the land of Rambam. There is nobody, no Ba'adin, no Posek, no Rabbi. No halakhic decider that could come and say, you know what, I, I see the issue like Rabbi so-and-so, and I'm going to rule like Rabbi so-and-so against Rambam. No way. Can't happen. And this refers to the entire malchut, the entire kingdom of Egypt. The kingdom of Egypt at that time included Israel, by the way. And the entire Yemen. And I also heard that throughout the Maghrib, throughout the Now we continue with the Radbaz. Radbaz, another one of his tissue bought in Hal Dalit. He writes like this Ve'ud ani Omir. Ga'ad kan. Laqa amar maharik. Beshema murdechi. De masele memar. Kimni kitloni. La hasikam mamur beyadu. Illa heka. So so um, the Radbaz is writing a teshuvah, and obviously it has to do with a legal issue concerning money, it's a monetary issue. And he's saying that the Maharik is writing the name of the Mordechai. You can't say that I'm going to well, you know, hold the money and I'm going to say that, no, I'm going to follow the ruling of this rabbi or... Uh, over here, I want to follow the ruling of this rabbi. But in this city, I want to do this. You can't do all this. This right here, Ki Atrin, this land over here, this area, this is the land of Rambam. You have no choice. You follow Rambam, only Rambam over here. And the place that follows the Rosh, over there you follow the Rosh. But you can't get a Sofer to include all the opinions of every Posaic in one contract and say, well, we're going to follow this and this and this and this and this, so we can follow all the opinions, like we see nowadays. Right? Oh, but we have this shita, and we have this da'a, and we have, this guy says this, and this guy says this, and I want to be mahmir like this, but I want to be mekit like this, and I want to include it all in one contract. It doesn't work that way. This is the land of Rambam, you follow Rambam. That's the land of the Rosh, over there you follow the Rosh. Plain and simple, and leave it at that. Now, again, it's my life. Maran, Yosef Karo again, before writing of Shahanu. Um, 
In the Beit Yosef, he writes, "Ve'ani Omer shebizman hazeh parshat hadavar bechol gililotenu lefsok haRambam." Zulat b'kset nekomot sheukshu lahem de barav velo yadu lesuk alato. And I say, nowadays, it's very simple, and this is the way it is all over in all our areas to rule like Harambam. Except in certain instances that they had a difficult time understanding his language and they were not able to fully understand the rationale and the logic be- behind what he said. That means all the Piskeh Halakha or the overwhelming majority of the Piskeh Halakha they follow Harambam. But he Correct? Didn't, but he didn't. He didn't. He, okay. He had his own thing. He changed it. That's not a good proof. But he's telling you what before he went to the Shahalu. Before he came up with that idea. He's talking he's probably talking in regard to Hosh and Mishpas, yeah. Okay. Let's say he's talking in regard to Hosh Mishpas. Not that I know, but probably I imagine he 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 falls out on about more than than you know. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm either. not uh, well versed in Hosh Mishpas to say. Me too. Next instance. In Kedushat Shibirid the Perot Goy Sheken Ketu Beshelot Shavot Abkat Rochel. Abkat Rochel is the response of B. Yosef Karu. The En Omar, the Harambam, Shuhu Mare de Atra Perig Alehu. So Haram, again, B. Yosef Karu writes that who's the Mare de Atra? Rambam. Ve'od ketub sham, in another section, Muhari katab azayad da'al harambam samkinan dehu mare da'atra. We rely upon harambam because harambam is the ruler of the land. He is the master. Again, Maran left and right is telling us this. Again, look at Maran again. Mizvah ibum kodemit. אחים כתבו בשלו שבועות בית יוסף ושאלו ממני לחבות דעי בהנני משי ואומר דיברה דיבר גלילותינו אנו תופסים להלכה דמזוות יבום קודמת כהרמב״ם שהוא מראה דעתרה If we have a situation where we need to do יבום or חליסה יבום comes first And why? Because that's what Rambam ruled. And Rambam is the master of this area that we're living in. His law is the law of the land. Different situations, continuing of the line. But by the line, he's telling us that Rambam's law is the law. Bidin kifiyat kifiyat get forcing the get. Ketu b'shelo shavot bet Yosef. Mode de bechi ha de bechi ha kofin oto lehosi aliva de kol alma pene haye nefesh de meikol de mechal sheken de rei hape ktaawa b'yoshami bechin fasak harambam mareda atra. Again, he refers to harambam as the master of the land. Time and time again. Abu Yusuf Karo is writing all this in Israel and he keeps referring to Rambam as the ruler and now David you're right how could he go and you know and keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this and then the next day wake up and say you know what I'm making a new book of Halakha I'm not following Rambam <laughs> politics sounds like a rabbi Make us dip our celery in the uh, vinegar. Katam Mara, be shelo shuot ab kat rochel. Yil meden or abenu ki hilot shino hagim kaharambam be kul otav hamul otav dor ahar dor. That they asked Rabbi Yosef Kham. Rabbi, we have a question for you. The congregation and they follow Rambam 
in all Harambam's leniencies and in all of Harambam's stringencies. And they've been doing this for generations already. Mahu lechof otam min ho kahari. What is the deal with trying to force them to follow Rabbi Yaakov? Rabbi Yaakov is the son of the Rosh. Bezul Atam and others. Ma'aharonim habiyim sebarot. And others that also come along in the later time after Harambam and they bring all types of different explanations and reasonings. Or Dilma, he's the Harum and had Abu Techim. Or. No, maybe they just have to be careful and just, you know, safeguard the minhag of their of their fathers. And now, if these people that follow Rabbi Yaakov or others come and they become the majority in the land, now does that overrule everything that was going on until then? What's What's the response of Maran, of Shuhar, of Yosef Karo? Who is this guy that dared come and try to force people that are already following Harambam? To try to force them to follow practices of any other rabbi, whether he be a Rishon or a Haron. Didn't we learn? The halakha is like Bethlehem. Now we have the question. So if the guy wants to follow everything like Bet Lil, very nice. He wants to follow everything with Bet Shemai, very nice. But if the guy wants to do, you know what, I want to follow all the kulot, all the leniencies of Bet Shemai and all the, kulot, the leniencies of Bet Lil, this guy is considered a rasha. Some guy says, I want to follow all the humrot of Bet Shemai and all the humrot of Bet Lil, this guy is considered He's a dummy walking in the darkness. Okay? Either you're following Bet Shammai. Like in the car. Either you're following Bet Shammai with all his stringencies and leniencies, or you're following Bet Lil with all his stringencies and leniencies. Or this way, or the other way. Now, don't you understand? It's Kalba Homer. We know Harambam is Gadul of the Poskim. He's the greatest of the Poskim. And all the communities of Israel and Arabistan, Arabistan meaning all the Arab countries, mainly talking about Mesopotamia, uh, Persia, uh, Babylonia, the whole area. They have Maharab, Maharab being North Africa, as we said before. But not, but not Morocco, really, was it? Maharab. Maharab is Morocco. Maharab. What do you mean? Huh. Of course. Maharab being all of North Africa. Nuhagim okay. Alpid. They practice according to his rulings. And they accepted him upon themselves as their rabbi. If somebody is following everything on bomb, why would anyone dare to come and force him to do otherwise? And all the more so in a case where them and their fathers and their grandfathers were following on bomb, you know, why would they deviate even one iota from him? Makes no sense at all. And even if within the own city now came and became numerous numbers, congregations and people that follow the Rosh and others, they cannot 
come and force the minority of the people that were there previously and followed the Rambam to change the ways that they were following the Rambam and to not follow the ways of the Rosh. They can't do that. And it's not even a show what it's going to do. The whole is the whole Kahal no he came in hell, came in hell, he Because each congregation must follow their original Minhagim. They are considered like two separate courts within one city. This is the court of Rambam, and they follow this way, and this is the court of the Rosh, and they do that way. They don't mix with each other. They came in and came they're not making separate groups because each group has a, their own rabbi, their own court system, their own uh, law decisors, and that's what that's what they found. And each congregation is considered like their own separate entity, their own separate city. And the members of this congregation cannot force the members of this congregation and vice versa. And the way I see it is the way I wrote it. I am Yosef Karl. What do you say to this? Alright. Oh, they had a situation in the city of Safed. Ruben Ashkenazi, he sanctified. Who? Eshet Ahi Abi Imo. The wife of the brother of the father. father, of the father. father. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. If you can figure it out, it's okay. I'm going to run out of paper to figure it out. I must be just. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm saying. 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 I'm not Okay. But the Yaqub and the Rosh rule against the Imam. And the Sayyid and the Sheikh. Hine. כנגד דבי והראש עשרה גדולים וטובים בן מוחנן אל ושאל תוד והאלי והרמב״ם והרמא והרדבא ונמו כוי יוסף ובן מרחם ורבא ורעבייה והגהות הרי אחד עשר ויעלה לדעת שאין אחד עשר פוסקים כדאיים לסמוך עליהם נגד דבי והראש זל כאילו שהוא היה דס קייס ואין דה גמרא seems to came, come to a conclusion. And the majority of the Rishonim rule like the Gemara's conclusion. But Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Yaakov being Yaakov Bar Asher, Bala Turim, and his father the Rosh, ruled against the Gemara, against these Rishon, all these Rishonim. What did Rabbi Al-Sheikh come and say? Rabbi Al-Sheikh said, look, a little due respect, Rabbi Yaakov and the Rosh, we have ten, ten great rabbis, the Ben Ohanan Eil, and the Sheil Tuot, and the Reef, and the Rambam, and the Rama, and the Ridba, and the Mukay Yosef, Ben Yoraham, the Abba, the Abba, yeah, it's ten, and also we also have the Haggahot, that makes it eleven. <coughs> now, would anybody even consider that we have these ten great guys here, and we have the Reef and the Rosh over here, <coughs> who should I listen to? Should I listen to these 10, 11 greats, or should I listen to the Yaakov and the Rosh? Mm, I don't know. What should I do? Right? What did Maran do? Umasha Omnim, Shimpeneshem Ashkenazim, 
ודרכם לפסוק כהראש. Well, they want to say now, well, maybe they're Ashkenazim, and they're raised, generally they do things, they rule like the Rosh. Hello, ends in negat kohanir abravi. How could you come and say it? It makes no sense. How could you come against ten giants? The old kid, umatam, ze yish ahir. And on top of all that, you forget about it. It makes no sense that you have eleven giants, and you have these two guys, who are also very big guys. Not, you're not belittling them, but come on, you have eleven great guys. Okay? But on top of all that, let's look at this. Harambam, who are you? Harambam is the master of the land. Right. The land, the law of the land is like Harambam. And our entire borders follow Harambam. That's it. Yaakov, thank you very much. Rosh, thank you very much. But... You're not for us. That's what the Sheikh is saying to us. Rabbi Yaakov Toledan, or Rabbi Yaakov Toledan that we know, that uh, was. No, Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Toledan, Yam Hagadol. We studied his tissue book before. Rabbi Yaakov? What? The one on Rabbi Yaakov? No. No, no. Rabbi Yaakov Toledan, he wrote a book called Yam Hagadol. It was published in Cairo in 30, 1932, but later on, when he moved to Israel, he became um, the head of the Ministry of Religion, and he was also, uh, where was he, Chief Rabbi? He was Chief Rabbi in Tel Aviv early on. And we've read different things from before, and he wrote a lot of history books and other things. He he maharam al sheikh לא השתמש בכללו של מרן שיש כאן שני עמודי הוראה רבי הרי והרמב״ם כרגל של אישי. רבי יעקב תודה רבה סלנגר, look, notice carefully. מרן משל תדעי שאי, oh, well you know we have this rule that we have three עמודי הוראה that we follow and two out of three rule. He didn't say that at all. Because remember, שוחר נוק תלנגר, this is not a far-fetched rule. This is something that's already in vogue, something that's already in practice. So Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Toledano is coming. If that was something that was already in, something in fashion, something that was in vogue, something that was done, something that was looked at, don't you think Muhammad al-Sheikh would have mentioned that, would have pointed out? No. He didn't mention, okay, we have Rifa al over here and Rosh over here, so majority rules two against one. No. All he said, מילה שהרמב״ם מראה דעתרה שאי ישראל, period, wrong, we have one master, one leader, one חכם, he's רמב״ם, that's it. אם כן הקהילה של מרן בעניין של הושיט עמודי הוראה עדיין לא התקבל בישראל מי הרב השייח. remember, the השייח was after רבי יוסף קארו, after the printing of שוחר ערוך, after the printing of all of מרן's books. He didn't lose this rule. So this rule of two out of three of Rif Rambam Rosh two out of three Maybe. was not an accepted rule even after Shuhanu came out. Hmm. What do you say to that, my good? Here we go. And, <laughs> and the mystery continues. See, somebody needs to study this and make a real mystery book out of it. Figure out what's going on. So he, in what year did he live? Who? Al-Sheikh. Maharam Al-Sheikh. Let's look that up in a second. Doesn't Rabbi Shuluf deal with this a little bit? Yeah, he does with it. Give me a second. Maharam Al-Sheikh? Hmm? Maharam Al-Sheikh. Okay, we'll take him. Student of Rabbi Maharam. Okay, thank you. All the better. I don't know if it's the same one. They don't call him Maharam. Maharam. I'll get him in a second. Uh, you switch to the airplane mode? It's good, it's over now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the years of pause. I'm going to block you out on YouTube. No, so we're not pause. We're, we're, we're live. We're, you know, we're searching on our phones for this. Pause it. No, I can't pause What's it. What's the difference? I'm going to find it right now. Inside will be easy to find. Give me one second. It's all good. 
Yeah. Monkey, would you like to say hello to everybody? Because now you're on. I think you should tell David, sure. Hmm. I think Barry missed the class of his lifetime. And the, all he wants to hear is an bomb and a bomb and a bomb. And then he got it. And he ain't here. Where is he? Down the Let's give him the black list. Yeah. There <laughs> we go. California was yesterday. Oh, is this the first oh, time we brought Oscar? Right. 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 No, this is uh, a <laughs> uh, love my Moshe for certain things. All right, here. Al Sheikh. Rabbi Moshe bin Hayim Al Sheikh lived from 1521 to 1593. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, Where? He was. He grew up in Salonika, okay, Salonika, Greece. He was a student of. Uh, Rabbi Yosef oh, Karl over there. He then he let, settled in Safed, mm-hmm. where he gained eminence as a preacher and authority on Jewish law. And he was a member of Rabbi Yosef Karl's bit deen. And he got simicha from Rabbi Yosef Karl. Oh, <laughs> and he was also the master of Rabbi Hayim Vital. Wow. And two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Okay, 1521 to 1593. Wow. Student of Maran, Sa'u Maran's Dean, Gatsimi Khan from Maran, and he taught Maharhu. And who's the law of the land? Rambam. Okay. Rabbi Shalom the Beit Levi. I don't know who he is, but he's mentioned by Ben Ayahu. Shedarko, Shedar Bi Yosef Karo, Agarob Lefsok Besevra Kasar, Kisbarat Rambam, Demare Da Atrahu. So whoever this Rabbi Shalom the Beit Levi, he says that the path selected by Rabbi Yosef Karo, majority of the time in his abridged book, in other words, Shahar book, Follows the way of Rambam. And why? Because Rambam is Maredatra. He's the master of the land. Rivi Besadet Ashkenazi Kote, Beshel Shel Shelo, Rukmo Shepasa Karaba Gelo Rambam, Abihan Shel Israel Mara de Aradi Israel, Shel Kibbelu Alehim the Rab, Mesof Eris Teman. And so, it is a severe vessel in the Elishin Ab. So, the Bible says, Ashkenazi, he writes, the great rabbi, the father of all Israel, the master of the land of Israel, that they accepted upon themselves as the Hakam from the very ends of Yemen, in the south, all the way to the top of Turkey, in the north. <laughs> what do you want? Okay, Marana Habib, your friend, the uh, Behaim bin Benisti. Benisti. Oh. Okay, the rabbi of Izmir, Turkey, 16th century. Who's friend? David's friend. My friend, Ben Benisti. David and David is Benisti. Exactly, both Davids. Ketab Bissitro, Shirek, Yenisar Gedola. Ma Shepasak, Rabbi Yosef Karo, Besever Qasar, Shaharu Khatir. La Meakra'a, La Nismok, Ala Pesakahu. Look what he's writing. Haim bin Minister is writing that the ruling of Rabbi Yosef Karo in Shuharuch to allow something, this does not force us to rely upon this Pesach. Sheyaduahu, Sheyaseferahu mi Yusat kullu al pi sevarat harambam zar. We know that this book is basically based upon the reasonings of Rambam. Demare de Elisam Ma'arab Haya. And we know he was the master of North Africa. Upsefarazi Setam had called Alpi Sebarat Rambam, the Nehige be Elisam Ma'arab Kabate. And we know in this bridge law book, in this Shahar book, he basically went with the reasonings of Rambam, and Rambam was the rabbi of North Africa. That's where they follow Rambam stuff. And 
and keep this rule at your fingertips. Kol makom shara muharika. Every place that Rabbi Yosef Karo Yosef Dean Bebet Yosef Da'atol Epsok Lechol HaMekomot Veshinahagu Bechol HaMekomot Kifi Oto HaPesak Aval Kishelo Pasak Bebet Yosef HaHalakha Ella Besefer HaKasar Da'ato Shelo Yehuyab Oto Pesak Ella Be'es HaMa'arab Levad you see what he's saying? He's saying something totally different. He's saying that the Beit Yosef is one work, and the Shoharuch is an entirely different work. That's point number one. Point number two he's making is that Shoharuch, other than Beit Yosef, Shoharuch is based almost entirely according to Harambam, and this was made for People that follow Harambam. Who are those people? The North Africans. Point number three that he's making. If Harambam, and this is part of his rule, any place where Yosef Karo makes a ruling in the Beit Yosef, in the Beit Yosef, that means that Yosef Karo's intention is that this Pesach HaLecha is for everybody in all places. But, if he does not make that ruling, if, if, he, if he comes up with a ruling in Shoharu, it is not the same ruling that he created in the Beit Yosef. That ruling in the Shoharu is only for North Africa. Because this is based upon Rambam, and that's Rambam territory. Mm-hmm. It's a very big statement. It's a false statement. Could the commentary on the Torah, that's the reason? No, no, no not because not. Once again, he's, remember, he's saying so here in Turkey, we don't follow Rambam. That's what he's telling you. Okay. And in Turkey, we follow Shohanaru. We don't follow Shohanaru, we follow Beit Yosef. We follow Beit Yosef Karo. We follow his rulings of the Beit Yosef. The rulings in the Beit Yosef were rulings that Rabbi Yosef Karo made for all of Am Yisrael mm-hmm. in any place they may be. Mm-hmm. And if there is a ruling in Shoharuch that differs than the ruling in Beit Yosef, the reason for that is that the Shoharuch is based upon the reasoning of Harambam. And Harambam was the Marad Atra of Eris Ma'arab, meaning in North Africa. And therefore that ruling that has now come to him and he put that as law in the Shuhanaruq is not for everybody. It's only for the people who follow Rambam. And who are those people? Those people are the North Africans. Hmm? Very different. I've never encountered this before. That's amazing. I don't even know what to make of it. It doesn't, it, it, doesn't it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The Turks. It doesn't sit well with us because it's not something we've ever experienced before. Turkey. He's not it. even defending his own. No, it's not that he's defending his own. He's telling you that this is the rule. The rulings in Bit Yosef are for everybody. The rulings in Shoharu that are different than the Bit Yosef not are only for North Africa. Yeah, but the Harakhut of Izmir in Turkey is going to be different than Babel and different than Syria. So there's something. Than, but if we're all following Beit Yosef, we should all be following the same thing. Right. Except for the Moroccans, because they're following Shulchan Aruch. Right, and your point being? But they're not the same. We're not following the same. We are not? Why? Why not you? Why not? Yeah. Because we have different differences of opinion. We have different. Not all following Harambam. We're not following Harambam. We're not following Beit Yosef. Right? No? Not following. I'm not following you now. He is basically saying. All right, let's stop for a second. Before tonight's class, all right, or at least yeah. before this point, we generally knew that we always heard Sefaradim follow Shohan Aruch. Okay? We have accepted upon ourselves 
the rulings of Maran. Maran mm-hmm. bringing it be Yosef Karl. Oh, cool. It's in the North Africans never did, you say. I'm not saying that. Uh, this is what we, until tonight, basically always heard. Okay, obviously in numerous classes we heard otherwise. But we know that's the general model. Tonight's class will focus on was Rambam Marad Atrad Israel and Arsotha Islam? Was Rambam the master of the law of the land of Israel, of North Africa, of all okay. Islamic countries? And it seemed until this point, yes. In this instance, though, Kesha Gedola is telling us, no. Remember, this is now, we are 17th century. Time has elapsed. Developed. Things are changing now. Okay. He's telling us that the work of Rabbi Yosef Karo in the Beit Yosef is different than the work of Rabbi Yosef Karo in the Shaharuch. Because it's telling us there are two very distinct works. And what's in the Beit Yosef is for everybody to follow. And what's in the Shohan Aruch, the, the, the parts that differ from what I, what's in the Beit Yosef, they, are, they differ because they follow Rambam. And that's good for people that follow Rambam, where he's the Marad Atra. And we know that Rambam was considered Marad Atra, where in al Ma'arab, being al Maghrib, mm-hmm. Maghrib being North Africa. Okay. That's what he's saying. Okay. So the part of the Maran of Shachar Aruch that's different than Beit Yosef is based on Harambam. So the Hidush that he's only saying is that Harambam is not over there. Over there. Over there. Right. You know, we all said everybody all along right. saying it's Eddie. Right. right. Not so, everything but, but there. So, but, okay. So maybe. After the fact, later on. Later on, in other words, so now Rambam's stance as the preeminent Kosek started to dwindle. Right. And by 17th century, Rambam lost Israel, lost Surfi. lost all different areas except for North Africa. Everything. Right. And obviously he didn't know anything about Yemen, to mention Yemen. Because we know until today they follow Rambam in Yemen. Do you question the accuracy of that statement? What? Do you question the accuracy of this statement? Why? He's this is a statement of... This is his statement. This is what he... F- no, I'm just saying. This is what, no, he's, he's a reliable source. No, not that... I'm just saying. I don't, is he, you think he's right? But I think he's right. I think that what he, he is, believed to be the truth, and that's what he experienced firsthand. I believe that. No, I believe he th- thinks that also. I, yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's... You know, well, it's my a truth. Your, your experience is that? definitely truth to it. And how do, does Maran, Maran clearly the mention in his introduction. This is, this is the way they viewed it. He's, this is, this he's is after the Qidah or he's before the Qidah? Before. How much before? Fifty years? At least a hundred years. years. As far as I know, for a hundred years. Let's continue. Let's see what else he says. Shub katab Maran habib Okay, what else is it, right? A car is a car, and it's 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 a car, وزولات بمكومات معاتيها مسفاش ياسو دبريها رمبام بكلا الأخاء اللي بعد كل عنا. Except for certain things, the certain things of رمبام became mainstay هالأخاء all over. نبدأ بشارة دبريم هو ذيك في سبرات رمبام بين الأكيد بين الحمير وفي لوب مكومات شيء بيت السبرات ما بيس سبرات رمبام بستام. So he is really laying down a rule that he feels that رمبام is the most uh, is that Rambam's rulings take first stage in Shahanuk more than anything else. That was his that was his view of 
reading Haram, reading Shaharu. Okay. Well, we've seen numerous places where... We've seen numerous places, but the majority, he's telling you. Okay. He's saying if you look at the majority of the Halakhot in Shohan Aruch, the majority of the Halakhot follow, follow okay. Rambam. Rambam. And we've heard that before. Mm-hmm. It's not that we haven't heard it before. But he seems to be probably, he's probably the first one telling us that. Or one of the earliest to tell us that. Um, yeah. Okay. Shu Katab Malan Habib. And what else do you say? Begin with Ben Wam Mehabir, another Bishop Karo. Lu Hayap was sick with Setroha Kasar. He said, I'm going to go to the Lord Kinegar Rambam. He would not rule in Shuharu like Sefer Mizbot Kedolot against Harambam. Umagam biyot sabrat Harambam shehu posek hayoter mifursam shabba'ulam. And don't forget, Harambam is telling you is the most famous posek in the world. Kemosh katar rabbinu wa mahabir ba'adamato, like Maral wrote in his introduction. Ubar min din yaduwa mifursam shedeir khabbinu wa mahabir b'sefru haqqasar lehatik l'asho Harambam it was well known that in Shaharuch, Rabbi Yosef Karo copies the exact word and style of Harambam. Because he wrote this particular word, Shaharuch, in Israel, and in Israel, Piskei Halakha followed Rambam. Dileg Sebarat Harambam, Shehi Sebarat Kola Poskim, Pekata Sebarat Semag, Shehu Sebarat Yahi, Ta'ata Umta Tamuha. Because in this particular instance, he totally skipped over what Rambam said, and he only wrote what Semag wrote, and this is Da'at Yahi, and I don't know why. I'm just surprised by it. So in two spots he showed us that Rambam was considered as the Marada Atra of North Africa and over here he's telling you that in Israel they followed the rulings of Harambam and Shuharu was written in that way because it was written in Israel so he had to follow what was being done. Bisikum in summary Marana Habi Omelan ki Marana Ta Shuharu Yotel li Kibbun Harambam me Asheb Besefe Bet Yosef So he's telling you that Two distinct works, and in the work of Shaharu, it followed more in the path of Rambam. And the reason being that Beit Yosef he wrote outside of Israel, and that outside of Israel was not, you know, one of Rambam's lands. Shaharu he wrote within Israel, which was the land of Rambam. Last point. Yes, the Hosif. Alam Mikolot and Skrim the Ayat Shete Halakhot Shaharu. We have to add two points, two sources of two Halakhot that are mentioned. Yes, Shaharu. Behem Mosel Lar Maran ki Nahagu la Kayem Otan Kedat Haram Bam Be Israel Zibotea. That Yosef Karo told us specifically in those Halakhot that those. Halakhot, they followed Harambam in Israel and the surrounding areas. Halakha harishona noga'at the kiri'at ha'lel b'li b'rakha b'Israel. Reading the ha'lel with ar b'rakha in Israel. Odoteha katab maran. What did maran write in Shuharuk and Orahayim? B'yesh umrim sh'af ha'sibur en b'barek alab lo b'tahilla b'lo b'asof and that's what we do. Okay? Then we, we read half a lil, the hasi a lil, like we read for the last six days of Pesach. Okay? Or like we read on Rosh Kodesh. Okay? We read it without the Berakha. We do full halil, we say the Gmort halil. Other people, when they do half a lil, they say the Krot halil. And a mom doesn't say that. And a mom. Is it Jacob? Not only Jacob. Well, the Sephardim do too. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's no. The Minhag. The, the opinion of Harambam is no better than that in the beginning, not in the end. 
And this is the custom in, throughout all of Israel and the surrounding areas. The second halakha refers to the barakha of Shehiyan for Brit Mila. And Manan writes, Kishahab Asmum Mohilid Beno, when the father himself is the circumcisor for his son, whom barakh Shehiyan, he makes the barakha of Shehiyan. Fima Mohil who are here, and if the Mohil is somebody else, Yesh Ugri Shein Sham Birka Shehiyan. There are those who say there is no Birka Shehiyan. With Haram Bam, and according to Haram Bam, the Aulam Abi Barak Shehiyan, Al Kumina Mila. Okay, the father always says Shehiyan. No matter who the Mohil is, it's every Mila. Hmm? We mentioned it. Mechina Abu Bekom Al Kut in Israel, the Surya. And this is the custom called the Harambam throughout the entire kingdom of Israel and Syria and the surrounding areas and the kingdom of Egypt. Period. So this was in Shoharuk itself. This is what we will say of Karuk. Maskanot, I don't think we need to read any real Maskanot. Um, bottom line is, what did we learn? Rambam was the man. Rambam was the man. Until he got pushed out of the picture. And he seems to be not the man for one small area, but for a vast, vast area. Basically, anywhere where they spoke Arabic. Rambam was the man. Um, I don't know. There's a little bit more to say. Nothing that we really need to look at right now. But the most important thing is we need to understand what changed, how it changed. And, you know, what do we do about it? Can we do anything? Of course we can't do anything about it. Some people yeah, think that over. you can. It's over. But it's not over. Now the question is now, if you move back to Israel, do you follow the law of the land up to Rambam? Or do you say that, well, Rambam was king, but now Shuharu became king? Uh, what would you say the percentage of Shulchan Aruch to Rambam is? Say that again? You're saying Shulchan Aruch, like they were saying in here, is close to Rambam anyway. Right. Is it like a percentage? I don't know. I don't know. Absolutely. You guess it off the top of your head. Is it more or less what Rambam is saying or not? Should I give you this now or tomorrow? I'll take it now. Oh, can I show it to everybody? <laughs> you can read it. Show, show it. I can read it. I read it already. No problem. Maybe the video people want to see it. Yeah, it's terrible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's twice a day for a week. Okay? Yeah, thanks. No problem. <laughs> ten, ten, I should go. Hmm? Ten, ten, I should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we know. <laughs> the towel, Uncle. They give us 22 minutes. And you get nothing. <laughs> um... I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. It just leaves us dumbfounded because for years they're pushing one agenda down our throats and they never reveal the truth to us. Who's they? The rabbinic establishment? School? Yeah, you know the truth. Synagogue? You know yeah, the, the guy who was to believe from the staff and they killed him. You're not going to go back and start keeping Mishnah We're not that. saying we're going to go back and start keeping, but why don't they at least tell <coughs> us what really happened? Because they don't know. Because well, they don't want to follow Manan. Why no, are we tipping water? They, they don't follow Manan, though. But they whitewash over history. So, why are like, we salt watering it? Well, That's just it. like uh, they That's say, Kibanu Horat Manan. Okay, why? Like that. And then they're not. They yeah. go against salt it. Salt water again. The establishment, mm-hmm. right? So that's in history. He's going to look at it also. That's the Yad al So the Yasuf Yosef dynasty is going to be the dynasty. They got ripped apart. And they're going to go. They're. <laughs> but uh, no, don't, no, don't, don't, don't kid yourself, <laughs> Daddy. Don't, don't kid yourself. Don't believe though that these Jewish communities within the Middle East follow Haram Bam exclusively. You have to understand, before Rambam came on the scene, they had Halakhot, they had Hachamim, and they were following things. And they didn't give that up for Rambam. And that's a fact. What are you talking about? How many years ago? After the burning? After After the book burning? A thousand years ago. Before, when Rambam was coming up to... 
Let's say now we're dealing with the year 1100. Rambam is not born yet. Rambam is born 1135. Right. Okay? 1150. Rambam is still not writing Halakha. Right. He's, okay? He's, he's still an he's unknown. He's up and coming. He's, yeah, he's, but he's still an unknown. And he's still... Pre-book burning or post-book burning? They burnt his books. I don't know was following him. Hello, he's 15 years old. Nobody knows me. He wasn't writing anything for anybody to see yet. Okay? Bottom line is... What they were doing in Yerushalayim, let's say, in 1150. Okay? If they had certain halakhot that were following based upon Tarif. different hachamim, you think that when Rambam came along, they took whatever they were doing and tossed it out? No, I'm sure they did not. I don't think he, even in his introduction, I don't think he's telling you to toss out your No, of course game. not. He's telling you don't no, just study any of the books. He not that, first of all, Ramban doesn't really talk about following the Minhagim. Yeah, but he gives an introduction, he says that he went through the works of the Gilmim, the Talmud, and right. everything. He says, he says, one, he says this one statement where the, that if there's one Beit Din in one area, or, or you have it, or <coughs> versus the one of the Gilmim, you follow the one you want. Mm-hmm. So he's giving like a code, just guide a guide to follow his code. His legal code, that he, his book of halachot. I don't think he's telling people that to bend them in the Hmm. Nor I think should be. Right. Hey, turn, turn, turn to the next page for a second. I'm gonna look at page two forty three. Mm-hmm. The last paragraph of the review of Seth and see uh, see. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was part of the old school of the Mustarabi. Community before there was the influx of Spanish exiles that came in. Okay. And we have different testimony to make us believe that they followed everything called the Haram And he himself gives testimony. Okay? So in 1518, we have first-hand testimony. He mentioned he did, he only mentioned seven things. There might have been more things, but he had mentioned seven things that did not follow Haram Bar. Okay. We don't know who they follow, but I'm sure we could figure figure out. Who, well, but they probably follow the community. What? What else wasn't around yet? 1518, 1518? he was. He wasn't uh, somebody to contend with it. But remember, he was a Mustarabi. So they were doing it for they were years doing, before. They were doing exactly. Maran was some, Spanish, some Spanish kid. Uh, yeah. I'm saying Maran was some Spanish kid to them. Some, some kid that came over from Greece. Uh, and you have to understand, he's in Yerushalayim, Malaw is in Safed, and we know the problems, the political and rabbinical problems, the friction that was going on between the rabbis in Safed and the rabbis in Yerushalayim, especially over the whole concept of Semifa. Mm. So, they did, the Yerushalayim people did not like the Safed people. Keep that in mind as well. 